Well, the focus is back in the garage. It's all wet. It's actually not raining. It's uh, defrosting. Because uh, it was really cold last night and it rained the, during the afternoon. But why is it in the garage again? I thought I was done with this car. You can't really tell because it's mixed with the uh, water off my shoes. But uh, the clutch master cylinder is leaking. Uh, so we got to fix that. No, you can't really see it. I don't. My light's broken and uh, it's too dark under there to point the camera. But anyway, it's leaking and uh and you can see the wetness in this picture that I that you're that you're looking at now. Got my new one here. There's part number. Got this from Advanced Auto Parts, of course. And there's the uh the new one. It is kind of a funny looking piece, isn't it? But uh there's the plunger. And uh you know the, when you push the pedal it, it moves this in and out. Pretty weird looking. And also in the box, some instructions. Uh, yep, this is a uh, pretty generic instructions, so we're not really going to be able to use those. But here's the new one. Uh, basically, I think it's mounted like this inside the car firewall being here, uh, your pe your pedal being somewhere around here, and it presses this push rod in and out. So inside the car, <coughs> you get to disconnect it from the pedal assembly and from the firewall. And then uh, from the firewall, either from the top or from the bottom, you have to disconnect the lines. So that'll be fun. Now if you look way back in there, you'll be able to see just barely the lines. I think it would be easier to get to if I took out this electrical box here or moved it out of the way anyway. Not really sure what's involved in doing that, so we're about to find out. So there's a couple tabs on this side. Let's peel those back. Uh, and that disconnects from that side. On this side there's a tiny little screw. That little screw there in the center of the screen needs to come out next. Well, I removed the air box assembly there in a second. Move this down out of my way. And now, I'm getting a closer look at what I need to do. So now you can just see uh, where my shadow is pointing right there. That green fitting there, that is the lower fitting on the master cylinder. And this hose right here that I'm wiggling, that is the, that is the fill into the master cylinder. Um, so fluid comes from the reservoir, which is shared between the brake and the clutch. Uh, down this hose into the master cylinder and then pressurized by the master cylinder into that line that goes to the to the clutch itself. So now we know what we're working with. We can see it pretty easily. Alright, I've moved the seat all the way back. And now I'm gonna disconnect or I'm gonna remove this panel here to gain some more access. So that dropped down. I need to uh unclip this OBD port here from it from the console, and we also need to loosen up this nut here for the hood release cable. Yep. I think it will. Once that's loosened up, I think it'll come right out of its slot. Yep. Then for the OBD plug, I'm just going to get a little flat screwdriver here. Pull this tab back and see if I can. Wiggle this plug out. I'm also going to push on it from the back. There it goes. Sweet. So now this is out of the way. Alright, with that panel removed, we can see a lot more of the, uh, the assembly here. Yeah, that, that was really dripping. Alright, well, first thing, I'm just going to remove this plug because I see it and it's easy. That's done. 
Now, if you remove a bolt up there, the pivot, the nut that it pivots, the nut that holds it onto the pivot bolt, uh, you can make it a little bit easier. But I'm going to not do that because I think this will be a little bit quicker anyway. Um, on this side, there are two nuts, and you can there are two bolts. You can see them there. They're both what I'm guessing are 10 or 11 millimeter, probably 10, on this car. Uh, those need to come off and then the master cylinder will be allowed to slide sideways except for the fact that it's still bolted to the firewall. Uh, yep, they're tens. Uh, should grab my ratchet. Uh, that upper one doesn't have as much clearance so you're going to need one of these little ratchety box wrenches to get it out. Where are you? There you are. Alright, well those two bolts are out, which means that the master cylinder is now held in only by the two wire the two lines there and the bolt. I'm just showing you here on the new one, those two bolts go right there and right there. There's no clip or anything that holds this on. It just slides perfectly sideways along its axis along the axis of the pin off of the pedal. So now we got a bolt that goes into that and then we got the two lines. To disconnect the lines you see these little clips here. Those little clips in there kind of grab onto the the hose so to get them out you need to get like a pocket screwdriver or something. A little flathead pull them out. See that little notch there. What I'm going to try to do is disconnect the top line first, and then I'll just pull it out and hang it somewhere higher than the master cylinder so it doesn't all leak out. And then I will do the lower one, and then that bolt. Uh, you can see that bolt right in the center there, that rusty thing. <laughs> Hopefully it comes out easy. And then uh, we can replace the master cylinder and hook it all back up. I don't think that uh, I'm going to be able to work in there and get you guys a good angle to see what I'm doing. But I'm going to try my best. Ah, well that's fun. It's so rusty that it decided to round itself off. Okay, well, got it to turn. So now we look down in there, we got both fittings disconnected and that bolt out of the center. So let's see if we can just, uh, I don't know, push this thing in. I'm, I'm not really sure. Let's see here. Back inside the car now. We're just going to pull everything sideways and hope that it all comes apart fairly easily. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to move some stuff maybe. Oh crap, I have this to not look. Like there's enough room, does it? Alright, well there's like this, uh, this little plate here. Do you see it moving separately there? So that's got to come off first. I didn't realize that until I saw it moving through that little bolt hole from the inside. So let's peel that up uh, off of there. There it is. Sort of provides an extra seal to the firewall, I suppose. And now hopefully we can pull this thing out. All right, well, I was reading that it, you wouldn't have to remove the pedal bracket, but I really don't see how you're supposed to not do it. I uh, I think it's necessary, so I'm going to get a deep wall 13 millimeter and uh, just pull this pedal bracket off off the firewall here. This is four bolts that hold it to the brake booster there. All right, I loosened the bolts up all the way to the end of the uh, the nuts up all the way to the end, but I didn't take them out. Uh, I'm hoping that that's gave me enough to slide this out, ah, and apparently it has. Oh, I spoke too soon, maybe. 
Come on, baby. Come on, motherfucker. Ah, there. There we go. There's the old piece of shit. Ah, whatever. Man, pain in my ass. Alright, so here's the old and the new next to each other. I'm going to compress the piston to make it smaller. Transfer over these little things so dirt doesn't get in there while I'm installing it. And I'm also going to put this piece of foam. Alright, so I got this new one ready to go. Let's just go to the car and stick it back in where it was. Just slide this the holes there in the firewall. Rotate it back into position. There we go. Now I'm going to tighten up those four nuts that hold the pedal bracket on. Well, the pedal bracket's back into place, and I'm going to put these two bolts back in that go in from the side here that hold the master cylinder to the pedal bracket. All right, well, that's in. Now we're going to put the switch back in. Now, I actually broke a couple of the tabs on this by accident, but it's okay. It's not really in a high-stress environment, so I'm going to get it right where it needs to be. Uh, it still has enough tabs to hold it in place, but not under the tension that it would normally have. So I'm just going to put a couple zip ties. It'll work perfectly fine. There we go. Two big zip ties and then one little one to keep them from sliding. Next, the seal goes on. The arrow goes down. It's actually got these little umbrellas here to keep uh, water from coming into the water that runs down the inside of the firewall, the outside, whichever way you look at it. It keeps it from running back into that hole in the firewall and into your pedal assembly and onto your carpets. So, arrow goes down. Slide that over those two little nipples and then uh, install your new bolt. I got a new bolt here. It's not new, but it's in better condition than the one that came out, so let's do it. So everything around the firewall is now tightened up. I'm going to install the lines next. Now, I'm going to install the top line, and then as soon as fluid comes out the bottom one, I'm going to hook up the bottom one. The reason I'm doing this is it lets a little bit, it helps me bleed the system just a little bit by getting that much more air out. And uh, I'm, I'm going to make sure i got plenty in the reservoir before I do this, because I don't want the reservoir to run dry. Pull this little cap off of here. Floor, but that's all right. I'm gonna make sure that I got my line ready to go on the lower one. I'm gonna wipe these off with my finger. I don't want any dirt on those O-rings. Okay, and we're gonna do this as quickly as we possibly can, so we don't lose any more fluid than necessary. All right. Well, you can see all that fluid there. Sorry I didn't show it to you, but I needed both hands, but uh, basically you just hook up the top one as quickly as you can. And then as soon as it starts flow flowing out the bottom one, hook up the bottom one as quickly as you can. Now, obviously I spilled a lot of brake fluid here. I'm going to spray this very liberally with brake cleaner, because brake fluid eats paint, and when there's no paint, it'll rust. So we're going to clean this all up as best we can. All right, well, I just sprayed that all down. Just about emptied my can of uh, brake clean. Uh, so now... But that's all put back together. I can put my fuse box back into position. That just clips in there. And then I can install this screw right into the, in the firewall there. Air box goes in next. Filter next. And the air box lid. Just screw it down. Plug it in. And tighten that clamp down. Next step is to top off the master cylinder. Now I plan on replacing all the fluid all in all the wheels, so I'm actually going to suck out what I have here. If you're just if you have if you're fine with the fluid that you have, but you just want to bleed the clutch, you can just top this right back off with some new fluid. But I'm gonna suck this all out and then put new fluid into the reservoir. I like this stuff. You can get it from like auto racing stores and stuff. But uh, it's a real deep dark blue color, so you can see. Uh, you can see it in the reservoir a lot more easily. Plus, um, you can go between this and they also sell the exact same stuff but a different color. Um, so that when you're bleeding the brakes, bleeding the brakes, you just bleed it until the color changes and you know you're good. You got all new fluid. Plus, uh, I'm sure it boils at a higher higher point and maybe it's, uh, you know, I mean, it's probably better stuff. So, anyway, this is what I use. Now we're ready to install the, uh, well, my cat's blocking it, but. That dash panel. We can put that back on.
Don't forget to plug in the switch here for your clutch. Otherwise your car won't start because it'll think you're never pressing the pedal. Lastly, I'm going to pull these carpets out and scrub them with some upholstery cleaner because there's brake, there's brake fluid on them and uh, I don't really want the smell or the, the slipperiness or the look. So I'm just going to scrub these down. Alright, and then the last step, of course, is uh, bleeding the clutch. Uh, you want to do that, the clutch and the, I already explained this, they use the same reservoir, so make sure you keep the brake fluid reservoir topped up. And if you look down in there, uh, beyond this little piece of insulation there, you can see the, the nipple, oh, I don't want to burn myself, uh, but it's right there, it's got a little cap on it, and it's actually uh, a quarter turn nipple, it's not like a normal uh, screw that you have, so you just stick a hose on there and then you just twist it with your finger. There's a little bit better look at it. You can see the neural part that you twist, and uh, you just twist it, unscrew it, and then have your partner press on the brake pedal and do the normal brake bleeding procedure or clutch bleeding procedure. You can also see some notes I left when I did the clutch on this car a long time ago. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so you just make sure you bleed that, and then uh, you should be ready to go and test drive. I'm not a fan of the uh, single person bleeding method, I don't find that it works generally uh, as well as two person bleeding method or vacuum bleeders, I, I like doing it with the, uh, the two person method. Uh, I'm going to make another video here pretty soon hopefully uh, explaining how to bleed hydraulic systems like brakes or clutches. And now we're ready for a test drive. Let me see both. <sighs> Safety first of course. Well, I got my foot down and uh, it hasn't stalled. Feels pretty normal there. I'd say it feels pretty good there. First. It's working good. <sighs> so a couple things to keep in mind when you're uh, working on these things. All the components have in the clutch have about the same lifespan. Um, so if I was replacing the clutch master cylinder like I did and the clutch hadn't been replaced, I might want to consider replacing the clutch slave cylinder because they both wear out at the same time. Uh, sort of. So this car, the clutch lasted 6,000 miles less, or 8, or something like that, less than the... Uh, than the master cylinder. So I replaced the master cylinder in this car uh, slightly after, but you know, let's say that the slave cylinder went out, uh, you'd have to take the transmission that, it's kind of weird on this car, the slave cylinder is connected to the throttle bearing. It's all one unit. Uh, so if you wanted to replace that, you'd have to take the transmission out. And at which point you might as, at which point you might as well replace the clutch because it's so much work to get to it. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind. I didn't replace the slave cylinder in this car because I, when I did the master cylinder, because I did the slave cylinder already, it was done with the clutch when I did the clutch a little while ago. So this car has a totally new clutch system. New hydraulic components and new fluid and the clutch itself was placed along with grinding the flywheel down. So uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, you know, it's not a total necessity. You can just replace things as they fail. Just be aware that, you know, when one part fails, it's possible that the other parts are, you know, about to fail as well. Just like if you do brake, you never do brakes one side. You always do, you know, both the front wheels and both the back wheels. And same with suspension stuff. If you're doing ball joints, you might as well do both sides. Uh, if you ever watch that Honda Accord upper ball joint repair video, I actually only did the one side in that video, and like, within a couple months, the other side was bad. So, uh, just things to keep in mind uh, if you're working on cars, you know. I mean, it's kind of how they all go. Well, I'd say that was a job well done. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult as far as uh, clutch master cylinders go compared to some other cars, but overall, uh, it's not really that bad of a job. I'd say the hardest part is just fishing it through the firewall, and uh, you know you gotta be laying on your back. You can take the driver's seat out actually if you want to to make it a little bit easier, but uh, it's not too bad. Not too bad. I'd say most people could probably do that. Um, tools you need to have. You need to have a basic knowledge of how hydraulic systems work. You can't just go in there and start doing things. Uh, so make sure you know how to bleed brakes and that kind of thing. Um, keep an eye out for the video I'm going to make on how to do that. Hopefully this video helps you out. Hopefully it saves you some money. That's what all my videos are made for. Uh, 
So if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, any uh, requests, let me know. I, I do uh, take those into account and take those into consideration. So hope you guys enjoyed watching. All right, this is my roommate, Andy. Oh, oh, he's turning around. Oh, where's he going? Oh, there he goes. He's gone now.